Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is Wednesday, November 12th, and um, I have some colleagues from New York City with uh, me tonight, which is pretty exciting. Um, often people are from all over. So um, we're, uh, we worked together in a Youth Voices Summer Program um, in a, you know, a, a program that's uh, going into the fall uh, that uh, kind of is called the Youth Voices Inquiry Project as well, so we might uh, call it back and forth like that. But um, basically, I will say, and then I'd love for some of you to describe your experience this summer after you introduce yourselves. Um, Christy Kingham and I um, had the great pleasure of facilitating six teachers and I think 16 students. Um, and we worked together for three weeks and based a lot of the work on what we've learned over the years at Youth Voices and over the years at the New York City Writing Project. Um, and worth mentioning, it was a, a project um, supported by and we're a part of the community. Um, we want to be more and more um, of the Hive New York City um, community and um, educator innovator as well. Um, Fred Minlin is uh, trying to join us. I think there's not enough bandwidth, so uh, he's just listening, which is cool. Um, and others may be joining us too, but let's go around and um, get quick introductions. Um, I think it would be fascinating if you could be, you know, don't just say, I teach this. Uh, be a little descriptive of who your students are um, as you're introducing yourselves. And, um, yeah, let's start that way. Christy, do you want to start us off? Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Um, so I'm Christy Kingham. I'm teaching at the Young Women's Leadership School in Astoria um, currently, in addition to working with the Writing Project on the weekends and in the summers. Um, and I, it is Young Women's Leadership, so it's all an all-girls public school in the DOE. Um, our students come from all over. Since it's in Astoria, it's the most diverse place in the world, actually, I learned. Um, when I first started there. I didn't believe it, but I did some research, it's true. Um, so we have, we have students from all over the place, and, um, and they're wonderful. Is cool. that enough? <laughs> yeah, you teach, you, I, I oh, what do I don't just say your grade, but <laughs> you teach 11th and 12th grade, is that right? Yes, I teach 11th and 12th grade ELA, and I'm also an instructional coach um, and lead teacher. So that's, that's my yep. current gig. So you're very busy, yeah. Great. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, Riala, you changed schools. Um, you were coming from one school and going to another school. Do you want to? Yeah. yeah, welcome. Thanks. Um, I just started my first year at Queens Metropolitan High School in Forest Hills, which is a, a big shift for me because I was coming from seven years teaching in the South Bronx. So this year I'm teaching two ninth grade classes for double blocks. I get them for 90 minutes each. And then I've also been given a class of repeaters, so students who are seniors and some juniors who have failed English classes in the past who need um, extra credits, so they're in my class. So they're a little bit more of a challenging group to plan for. Cool. Welcome. How's it going in a new school? It's going well. It's definitely, uh, you know, it, it's interesting feeling like a new teacher all over again and not knowing where the copy machine is or how to print things out and getting used to all the routines, but I feel like I'm finally starting to like hit my groove at this point of the year. So just finished the first marking period and everything's going well. Cool. So I'm just going down the line just to get everybody's voice in here quickly. Glenn Cora, welcome. Hi. Um, I still teach at International Community High School. A bunch of my kids came this summer and they continue Five to be them, interested right? and yes, yes. yeah and I see the Michaels every day they won't they won't leave me alone and um, they, <laughs> so cute. Saturday thing well as well as a few other kids who started going to the Saturday one are psyched about it so uh, all my students are English language learners and um, I teach ninth and tenth grade English wide range of ability levels so Cool. It's fun. Jim works with me. And you work with the guy next to you there, Jim Nine? Nine. Could you introduce yeah. yourself, sir? Sure. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm Jim Nine. Hey. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. 
also teach at International Community High School. I teach ninth and 10th grade ELA. Um, besides the three kind of regular English classes I teach, which are um, filled with a variety of students, Dominican, um, Yemeni, etc., um, I'm just started teaching a, a Bridges class, which is our SIF um, program at our school, and they're actually mapping. Out, they're actually doing a new curriculum for that. So I'm kind of a guinea pig, and um, that's taken up almost all of my time this year. Um, it's a new curriculum. They're trying to vet it. Um, they come in once a week. We talk about it. So um, it's kind of exciting, but also um, very busy. So, who's the they in that? Um, the Bridges program is from. Is it CUNY, Cora? Is it like City University of New York? Um, I don't know what it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, Annie Smith and Susanna McNamara, um, who uh, I don't. Know, they may have worked with. The, you may know them from the writing. They may have been involved in the writing project at some point. Maybe I don't, I'm not sure, but um, so yeah, they. Or they're vetting the whole thing. And for somebody who might not know what SIFE means, what is what is your definition of that? Um, so it's basically students who are potentially basically preliterate in their own native language. So they don't have like they're ninth graders, but they're not at a ninth grade level, like say in Spanish or in Arabic or in. Um, I think when we test them, we're expecting them to not have a higher grade level, a higher reading level than third grade. In their native language, so. And this is because they've had interrupted education. Is that? Um, that could be part of it. Um, yeah, they didn't go to school, you know, like year after year, or maybe when they were in school, they had other issues, or they moved a lot, or they just didn't go to school at all. Cool. Great. And Julie. When Julie said she's going to come tonight, she said, but that's really late, so yeah. thank you for coming. <laughs> this is my bedtime. <laughs> I actually it's fell minutes are off. Where do you teach? Sleep and then woke up to do this, and I'm going back to sleep. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. In my dreams. Um, so I'm teaching ninth grade and 10th grade. I, for a month, I was teaching this 12th grade elective Latino-American lit class. That um, I. What happened to that? that didn't... It didn't really work out. I didn't really want to teach it as an elective. I thought it was going to be like a required English class, and it was an elective English class, and I didn't want to teach like a second English class. Like I don't want to be in a second English class, so I didn't feel good about that job. So I said like I'll do it next year as a like required yeah. English mm -hmm. class. Anyway, I'm, and so now I have an advisory, and so I'm doing Youth Voices with my advisory, and I'm doing Youth Voices with, and I did it for a month with my elective kids, mm -hmm. and it was good. It was interesting to see, like, how they were doing it compared to how the kids in the summer were doing it. I feel like the kids in the summer had it down. I don't know if it was because there was, like, a lot of adults in the room, or it was just, like, a setup thing, or the type of kids who, like, will choose to spend their summer in school, sort of, or just more motivated type of student. My kids definitely, like, they definitely engaged in it and used it, um, but they weren't too enthusiastic about it. could just be about the summer, too, but but yeah. let's explore what the it is that they had down. Maybe or you could say more. What do you think the it is? You said they had it down. As, in the summer, I'm saying they. Yeah, did. I know, I know. What, oh, what does that? What does that mean? Um, I just, I just got the sense that kids were more like working independently, mm -hmm. without like the need for someone to be standing right next to them, being like, "Now do this, now do this." Um, and my students were more like, "What do I do now? What do I do now? How do I do this?" Even though, like, just like you guys had all the directions out in front of them mm -hmm. in like five different places, it was the same thing. Got so it. I don't know. It could have just been the environment, or it could have been like just more self-motivated um, kids that come to a program like that. Mm -hmm. Luis, welcome, um, Julie. Welcome, Luis. Thank you for rearranging things and being here tonight, too. I yeah. really appreciate that you've all done this. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yep. 
Introduce yourself, please, your students. And okay, I'm I'm Louise Bauso, and um, I teach ESL at a high school, so I work with grades nine through twelve at the same time, and they're grouped by proficiency level. And I'm using Youth Voices with all three groups, so the beginners through the advanced are all having similar projects. And ironically, the beginners are getting the most out of it because they have the most um, class time. The advanced are only with me one period a day, the beginners two or three, so they have had a chance to um, really surpass their peers in a forum, um, and that's never been true before, where they've done more with youth voices than their kind of more, more linguistically capable peers. Cool. Interesting. So yeah, and, and I teach, uh, just to say, I teach at the New Directions Secondary School. Uh, we're in our second year, and um, if you go to youthvoices.net slash NDSS, you'll see uh, we've got every kid in the school listed. And so I'm, I've been doing a lot of thinking about, you know, um, how things spread and how things, uh, <laughs> in, in, you know, with other teachers. Uh, so anyway. Um, having lots of fun with my own students, but then fascinated by how other teachers incorporate or don't incorporate. And that's um, worth saying um, as we keep describing here tonight. And I want to identify very quickly here that I don't like to moderate a lot. I want you guys to just have a conversation um, once we can kick it off. But I thought we could describe a little bit, having said that, um, do a little more description of how you remember the summer and what was most meaningful about the summer for you. Um, and not everybody here is using Youth Voices yet, and that's cool, you know. And we're, that's, um, it comes whenever you are ready to do it and whenever you, know, you have the place to do it, we kind of get that. Um, so, yeah, so let's talk about the summer a little bit. What, uh, it was three weeks in July. What do you remember from it? What do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Who said that? I, I can talk about it a little bit. Go ahead, Louise. Go ahead. For me, the summer was um, really in terms of my own personal troubleshooting of using this forum for publication. Um, I figured it out, which is, it, it takes me like three weeks to figure something out where I'm like adept enough to troubleshoot it for students. So I went through and made all the mistakes and was able to um, show my students how to do the basic things we've done so far, which was just creating a profile page and completing one mission and doing commenting. And it was really useful prep for what we've done in the classroom because I participated myself. So it's not just like sometimes I come up with assignments and I'm like, oh, this sounds good, but until I do it myself, I don't really have an idea what's going to go wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And um, the three weeks with me participating, I was able to facilitate it a lot more easily at the beginning of the school year. So and just to identify, the um, you created the mission that they're doing, right? This yeah. summer as well. So, and it's uh, using Powtoons and it's telling their, um, are they called immigrant stories? Their immigration it's an stories? animated introduction. But yeah, it is immigrant. The mm -hmm. guidelines I gave them were sort of geared towards immigrants, but it could work for anybody. And you made a wonderful one this summer. Um, anyone wants to go find it, uh, you can find Luis's name and all the work, any of our names, at youthvoices.net slash summer 2014 um, and um, anyway and then and then what they're doing I mean that seems to provided an amazing model for them I, we what are some of your other secrets for getting that work done I mean they did a really nice piece of writing around it too and, and they did the writing as an ESL team. Sure, it was unique for me because they all had to do voiceover, and it's the first time I've been able to do really targeted pronunciation work with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I recorded their voiceover, so we would practice it, figure out the um, 
if pronunciation issues they were dealing with, sort of drill it a little bit and then record it. So that was really cool. And then they, the technology they figured out. They just like got in there and they either figured it out or didn't. But most of them did. They did really good with it. That's very cool. Um, um, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. And, and I, if we uh, stay back Louise, in the summer, it'd be good too. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, um, I am staying in the summer. I would like to be in the summer right now. Let's <laughs> everyone close your eyes. We're just going to do some meditation now. <laughs> um, Louise, you mentioned um, doing doing the project yourself, and that's something like you know, in a project-minded or in a, a true connected learning model, you would you would want to do the project yourself. So I was wondering if if others wanted to talk about that experience of going through a mission that you may do with students or you may potentially do with students um, in the future. Is that an okay question, Paul? Sounds good. I, I, I would uh, just open it up. It might not be a mission. It could just be like, what was your project this summer? And what do you, yeah, you know, yeah. What yeah, do you cool. Think about it? So like, what was that experience like for you as Louise talked about it? Did you all have the same experience? Cora, Cora you became a coder. I'm not going to like Throw you a yeah. <laughs> I really liked that part of it. The summer was interesting for me because I tend to think of myself as someone who likes writing and research, and I didn't like that part of it at all. I felt like there was too much openness, and I got really frustrated with it and felt like I was being really, like, dippy about the way I was approaching it. But the coding, which I've never done before, was very cool. So I kind of liked that there were that many options and different routes, and if you dug something, you could go with it, and if you kind of got sick of something, you could also veer away from it. So I like that level of choice, um, both thinking about my kids' frustrations and how sometimes probably sympathize with them more for wanting to put something aside and not do it just because I told them to do it at that moment. So I don't know. I thought that was, it was interesting for me to be in the, the other side of it again. Um, yeah, it was interesting. I got to do a bunch of things I'd never done. I, Looking forward to trying it out again. So. When people hear that we're working with teachers and students together, and it's it is kind of an unusual model, I think, um, relatively, they worry that teachers won't be able to be students. Was it easy or hard for you to do that? For me personally. Yeah, anybody, but yeah. Um, for me, it was pretty easy. I think in that context where I felt like I wasn't those kids as teacher at that moment. I don't know like if I was in how it would feel, but over the summer I didn't find it hard to go back to that. I found it really easy to put on the student hat, if you will, like to get into my own project and focus on my own work, but then it was hard for me to take off my teacher hat. Like when a kid sitting next to me suddenly ran into a, a roadblock, I wanted to jump in and help them out. and um, So that was like an interesting dynamic for me. Hmm. T talk more about your project and I mean you did quite a lot of research in writing. Yeah, I, d I just like had freedom and like picked a topic. I did, I can, I agree with Cora, I did at sometimes feel almost even a little overwhelmed by all the things I could work on, uh, but I liked that there were all of the little pieces that I created, even though they were different projects, they all related to the same theme. So it was that same feeling of, I mean, I'm the same way when I, like, when I was in college classes and I was writing a paper. Sometimes I need to just put it down and walk away and go get a snack and do whatever and come back to it a few minutes later. So I definitely enjoyed the freedom of, okay, I can't write anymore right now, so I'm going to switch over to Google Docs and create a visual image to accompany what I just wrote. And so it was nice to be able to work on lots of different projects at the same time and sort of take a break from things, but still feel productive. Like I still ha always had something else that I could be working on. It was never just me, like, walking around doing nothing. And I'm purposely not jumping in right now, except... Any, any other thoughts people are having? I really miss the um, the free rights at the very beginning of class. I miss that freedom and that relaxed nature of just you know going in, whether I felt like I was a teacher or not, and I really didn't feel like a teacher in there. I always felt like that if I wanted to give somebody advice, I could. If they wanted to give me advice, great, you know, on how to do something. 
And I remember at points getting help from other students and at some points helping other students, but I never felt like, oh, I have to jump in. Um, but I, I really, and I think that that's one of the reasons why I felt that way was because it was so kind of an easygoing way of like, oh, let's do this today. And then, you know, if this isn't working out or I'm frustrated with something, I can go back and try something else that I wanted to do or look at. So um, I feel like as a teacher, like now I feel much more regimented, I guess, in what I'm doing. And like, you know, every step has to be like this and this is what we're doing and here's where we're going. And um, that's not how I felt with Youth Voices. I felt like it was very, just a really easy, relaxing way of doing academic work. I've been doing quick writes in my classes, and like I said, I have the 90-minute block, so I have a little extra time built into the schedule with the ninth graders, and it's something that I try to do every single class, even if it's just for five minutes. And we follow, we call it our quick write, and we follow with a quick talk. And students share, and they respond to each other, and it's, it's been a really great way to cultivate this environment of just student-based discussion and they're all sharing based on what they wrote so it's not on youth voices but it is something that I took away from the program that's been really awesome that's happening in my classroom on a daily basis. One thing that's been really useful um, with me is how in the summer everybody worked at their own pace and yeah, the students were motivated enough that they were there, that they were able to follow all the different things they could be working on and find something to work on. And once you put that in a public school classroom where it's not this voluntary participation, it's a little bit more difficult to moderate. But um, what has worked is like I do these um, sort of charts, like elementary school teachers do those charts where you see the students' names progressing through the writing process. You know what I mean? Like this student is at the brainstorming stage and they're moving across and it's it's monitored that way. I do that with youth voices like, okay, you've um, you've drafted it, you've recorded it, you've um, you've developed your pal tune, now you're commenting on other people's and they see where they're at, they get sort of inspired to they know where they need to be working. And in terms of grading, like, I can grade them really fairly. Like, were they all working or not? Not did they reach that step, did they accomplish that, but were they on task and working because they're at different skill levels and they work at different paces. So it's, um, it's really cool not to have that final project. Or, or more specifically, once the final project is reached, there's places for other ones to go in terms of commenting. Like, they can always go and look at what other people are doing and commenting, they always have something to be working on. Is that chart, did you create like an actual chart, like in your class, like on graph chart paper, or is that like a chart that... Yeah, it's like it's chart. projected in a PowerPoint, it'll be like a table with like green check marks. You've meet, reached this point, you haven't done this yet, so they can see what they should be working on and what they could be working on next. Are all their names listed so they can all see like where each other are? Yeah. And they can go up, um, it, it was sort of fun, like game show style, like I would make the chart based on what they'd done so far and it was really easy to create because of our class page, I just click on their name and see what they've done. And during the class period, they can come up and check off themselves on the smart board, like what they did that period. Oh, you have like a, a website, like a class website that you use. That this, you, was that, all, this was all done through PowerPoint. It was just a like table in PowerPoint, but they check off. Okay, I did that today, and I did that today, and I don't know. It it, it instilled this sort of I don't want to use the word rigor. I don't know. Everybody knew what they should be working on, and they were like wanted to go up and check something off. So Did you email that to me. Yeah, totally. So why do why do you want to avoid the word rigor? Because rigor is usually associated with like PD, and I, it's it's rigor is bad. Rigor is bad. <laughs> rigor is usually a, an empty word to me because of the way it's used in PDs. But what I'm talking about is everybody's inspired to be doing something, and they're doing it because they want to go reach that next stage in the process. And it's process work. Um, there is a final product, but even once you reach the final product, you start commenting on other people's work. Like it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, um, I want to say that, um, and 
if, if people haven't looked at the Paltoons, and, and I've got to get them on the page. Do you know how to do that, by the way? So it's youthvoices.net slash Paltoons to see the um, missions. And yeah. if I don't do it tonight, I'll do it tomorrow morning. I, I may have to sleep a little bit before. <laughs> but um, I, I want to make sure they all get listed as examples on the left side, um, which which we can do. Um, but if you haven't seen them yet, what, what's kind of wonderful about them is is hearing the, the, the student's voice, seeing the writing. Um, and then the photographs, many of the photographs seem like actual photographs, right? They're, they're a lot the of them photographs. photographs, yeah. Yeah. And that was the part, you don't even have to teach them how to do it. They all know how to do that from, like, they get them off Facebook and they put them in. Like, I didn't instruct them on how to do that. And that was the awesome leveling device between beginner English learners and advanced is a beginner could be better at that than an advanced student. Theirs could come out better. Maybe their pronunciation's not as good or as audible or clear, but they knew how to supplement it with text and, like, you know what they're saying. So I emailed it. I have like an email I can send to you all with all of the, it's links to all of their paltoons that I sent to all the teachers in my school because a lot of them haven't heard these kids talk. They're mm -hmm. like, I don't know, I have this kid, she doesn't speak English, I don't know what to do with her. And you click on this paltoon and you hear her voice, you see like her life experience, you realize she's a completely rounded person and that seems like a no-brainer to most teachers, but it's not at the teachers at my school. They actually see her as like deficit in some way, like she doesn't, uh, if she can't do it in English, she can't do it, you know? Doesn't have a voice. You're giving, yeah. you're giving her a voice. So, you're helping her express her voice. Yeah. That's so it was cool. so cool for some of the beginners because they did really well. Amazing. And, and just as I, I mean, this may be obvious, but for the viewer, um, seeing the image and hearing the voice and seeing the word all at the same time, like, if I get stuck in some of the listening, like, what did she say there? It, it, you know, I can see the image and it helps me along. And so, yeah, yeah it's really interesting. So uh, I hope they're patient because I think there will be people responding to those. So, and I hope you get to stay with those kids all year, do you? Or Yeah, for many years, like often oh, next good. year. Forever. Good, because that's how, that's how I worry, like, when, when something is, like, for making something like this is wonderful, but it takes some time to get, you know, response sometimes. I mean, you, you ask your kids to respond to each other, I think, but getting response from outside would be, is going to be great, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That would be yeah. great. I know how to put them on the page. I just, I haven't done it yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Me, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that'll make it easier for other people to find it. Uh, can you tell, I mean, Christy and I are not L teachers, and we have a couple of L teachers here, and, um, but one of the things that I want to say that I learned this summer was, was just watching, you know, um, I forget his name suddenly, your student who was only here since April. Um, Isaac. Yeah, it's watching him develop and others develop um, their language skills in, in really rich ways. And it's, it wasn't, you know, it's not totally an accident because, you know, we set things up the way we do, but we didn't necessarily set it up for L students, but I think it really worked well for the L students, the kind of combinations of how many L students there were, how many, you know, English speaking but Spanish speaking, and, and, and the trust that was developed and so forth. This, so, did anybody else want to comment on that and what that was like? Did I say too much? <laughs> what was the question? Yeah, good. So, so what? <laughs> did you, how did you see? The, like, there was there was a real, really wide range of English-speaking students in. This summer experience, and and I think that was that was kind of unusual. Like we didn't plan for that, but I think it worked out. Is what I want to say. So, so I think, why do you think it did work out? Let's put it that way. Or do you think it did? Or what else could we do? I thought it worked. I was not. Those are not my most outgoing students by a long shot. I mean. 
Um, I thought they all felt comfortable there, which was a big part of it. That they didn't feel scared or like they were going to be made fun of in front of that particular group. So that was kind of nice. Um, the nice vibe we had in the classroom. So I liked it. I thought it was fun for them to be able to um, talk to some people who most of their friends, all their friends at school are language I'm learners thinking, and they know about that. So. Oops, was somebody trying to get in there? Uh, Karen just joined. Louise, yeah. Louise, Karen is asking you questions on the group chat, just so you know. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Karen, I don't know why we don't see or hear you yet, but we'll see what happens. Um, so, anyway. I, One thing I would say about ELS with, um, with the, um, this forum is I feel like an important piece for that mission was the voiceover. That was the thing that really had them stretching in terms of language ability. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of working on youth voices doesn't promote, um, it's really great for their writing skills and their formatting and computer skills, but maybe not for oral language development, mm -hmm. so actually speaking, so that would be an, um, a great accommodation when you're using it with a classroom of L's, like that they have to, finding ways for them to say what they're publishing as well. Well, yeah, I, mean, just I mean, I have kids recording a lot. I mean, uh, we use Audacity, and we have them record not everything they post, but almost everything. So whether or not they're L students, it's a really interesting thing for them to experience. Because they, they tend to, because if they're publishing a lot, um, this they, you know, if they begin to write as if, Knowing that they're going to speak it too, yeah, right? which yeah. is which is interesting. But yeah, um, but it's easy to use Audacity to record something and then to just upload it as an MP3 right onto a discussion post. Right? So just to say, that's something. If they commented, could they in could they add audio to that or just the comment? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think that that's harder to do. But, yeah, it's not set up for that. So the, 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 you already commented earlier that, um, that having media possibilities um, made it possible for, for everybody to have a voice um, in the Paltoons. I, I think that happened this summer, too. Um, others have talked about the trust factor in the room was important. Um, any other thoughts about what happened this summer and then what you're thinking about in your own classroom or questions? We could go to questions or issues here, too. And I have a tendency to leave things too open. So please <laughs> give this structure. Where, where, what do you want to talk about at this point? I'm curious about like the next steps going forward. I, it's really interesting listening to Louise talk about how she's done things. Mine is probably going to start off as more of an after-school thing, so we get a little bit of leverage on it. Um, so, I don't know, I just, I'm looking forward to trying some things out, but um, definitely if we could get an email of like the things that have been done so far in other people's classrooms, that'd be cool, like links to those power yeah, Maybe we could talk, I mean, Karen is uh, sort of, is, is listening and uh, joining the chat in different places, um, but um, maybe she can join us here too, I don't know what's going on with her connection tonight, but maybe people could talk about hurdles, um, again, no judgment or anything, like, what, did, did you imagine getting into these voices sooner than you have, and or, what are you thinking about, like, what would, what would get in the way of doing it more with more students in your own school? Well, for me, even though mm -hmm. I've started to do it a little bit, mm -hmm. um, I think what gets in the way is just what I said about the kids not really being able to independently engage in it, and they're not, it's not en as engaging to them as it seemed to be to the kids in, in the summer. 
Um, mm -hmm. Like, I think that, you know, I, I shouldn't, it's not like they hate it. Like, they'll like it, but <clears throat> it's still kind of something that, like, they have to do in class. I don't know. It seems like they're not, it's not just, like, interesting to them off the bat, the idea of it. Um, my seniors, when I was teaching them for a little while, were, like, thinking it was, like, a dating website. And I was like, you're not, this isn't, like, a place to, like, pick up people. So I don't think they really, like, I, in the summer, I felt like the kids really cared about being able to express themselves. And that was really important to them. Um, and I don't get that impression from my students. I also work with um, a lot of special education students. So they're also really at, like, a third grade level. In even though they're not necessarily L students, they just are, like, a lot of learning disabilities and um, some of them are emotionally disturbed. Um, so I don't know if that has something to do with it as well. Perhaps. I mean, we did have special ed kids with us this summer, too, by the way. But, right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I, I mean, cer certainly one of the things that um, I'm hearing and we could ex we could talk more about is that line between connecting with other students, whether it's dating or just connecting, <laughs> right, and um, expressing and making things, right. Um, and when you're when you're expressing your voice and you're trying to make something really good and you want to put it out there, then maybe there's less time connecting. So I'm always walking myself back you know, from waiting for the major project to go up on Youth Forces, right? And, but, yeah. But certainly, you know, um, um, Don Reed's students up in Michigan and Chris Sloan's students in Salt Lake City and Joe Paricio's students in, um, in Oakland and there are some others in, in Oakland um, are, are, it would be not difficult to, um, to work on connecting people more, and you know, helping helping each other find um, a research buddy in a different school, for example, or somebody who's reading the same types of books. Yeah, I think, that would be but, yeah. I think that would be more motivating to the students if they felt like there was a particular person that they were, you know, expressing themselves to. Like in my mind, when I was doing the program, I was so aware and self-conscious of the publicness of what we were doing um, and they're not at all they're not that's not impressive to them or that's not like a factor of like oh everyone's gonna see this so maybe if they had a specific person that they had to communicate with that it would maybe be a little bit more motivating or a little bit more personal I don't know mm -hmm. Looks like somebody's like got a um, So um, I don't need to sound like a total bummer. Like I feel like the life is going to be. No, I'm just. Uh, I'm just uh, can people check to see? Uh, let me see. Sorry. Sorry. A little technical thing here. Somebody has. Uh, somebody has Okay, hello. Okay. No, not you. So, did anybody by accident on the broadcast? No, it wasn't you. Okay, hello? We still have it. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, it has sometimes been you. Oh, it's not me, but I did hear my twice. <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to work through it. Did somebody Did click on the click plus on the key plus and press play for the live to like live kind of watch it at the same time? No? Okay, we'll figure it out. Hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go. We're back, so we're back. Okay. Done what's going on. What's going on. Paul, so, it might be you. Oh, it might be you. I know, but I, know, but I can't, can't find can't anything. Find anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep talking I'll if keep you want to mute yourself for a second. Okay. Oh, you're muted. Okay, yeah. Oh, nope. Oh, nope. <laughs> 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 
Okay, we're gonna find you. We're gonna find you. This is demonstrating. Demonstrating. Okay. The pitfall. Okay. Pitfall. Okay. Do we still have it? We do. We do. We do. We do. It's not possible. It's not possible. Stop it. <laughs> okay, hello, hello. It was Gabrielle. Oh, it was? <laughs> I was messing so. with her. <laughs> Gabrielle, can, do you have another feed on somewhere? Do you have... Uh, no? Okay, <laughs> okay so She's we'll... Muted right hello, now. hello. Okay, so now we will okay. unmute everybody, and we'll... Sorry about this little interact, and uh, we'll come to the end of the show. You're, Okay, hello. Muted. So if you can unmute yourself, go ahead and do that. Hello? Gabrielle? Hello? Yeah, Gabrielle, yeah, you have, 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 have somewhere somewhere, somewhere in a different, different, uh, different uh, window you must have some yeah, you, you must have, you must have the broadcast on the broadcast I think. Hello, hello? Yeah. It is definitely Gabrielle. I'm not, sorry to sorry to yell at you. I'm not. I'm from. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> another so, window. So window. if you have teacher students, from, I'm, I'm sorry. EdTechTalk.com/ttt on. Maybe it got turned on somehow, or if you have it on anyway. Anyway, let's try to get back. Focus. Gabrielle will. Well, she left us. Oh no! Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Chase her away, Paul. Yeah, well, I hope she comes. <laughs> Luis, do you want to unmute? Do you know how to do that? No, we're back. So, somebody gets back on track. What do you, we have 15 minutes. Let's talk about. Uh, uh, ju um, I just asked? wanted to say, I don't mean to like sound like really down about it. Like, I did use it, and, you know, some kids were into it. Like, one kid in particular, this, he's not from Albania, but he's from, maybe he's from Albania. Like, he was one of the few kids who was very self-conscious about the public aspect of it. And so his autobiography was, like, three line sentences long. And he felt very uncomfortable about saying how he really felt about living in America. I guess he had just moved here a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And then finally, like, the fifth day of using it, he finally, like, just, like, wrote up this whole, like, really personal thing. <laughs> And published it, and I was like, "Whoa, okay." I thought you were really uncomfortable about doing this, and he did it, and it was really personal and really touching. So that was, you know, talking about L's or you know, English language learners. Like he's one of them, and he really found that as a avenue for him. Gabrielle, welcome back. Thank you. I don't know what happened. I don't either, but it's good. I didn't now. even touch it. I don't know. Look, I, yeah, I've 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 gone through that before and then realized it was me. So <laughs> it can't be epic. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, what one of the issues and and um, a teacher in my school, uh, Laura Lasardi, whose uh, eighth graders have been publishing more than anybody else, and she, um, and it's her second year using the site. Um, she's holding off, and and it's an interesting idea. Um, with having them build a profile. Or, or do that kind of stuff until they actually publish some some yeah. things on the site. Oh, that's interesting. So that's an interesting idea too. Like, has I she mean, found a lot of success with that, or I don't know yet. But 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 what what we find odd is when you know there's this profile that's this wonderful profile, and then there's not much in the blog, and you're like, well, what was the profile about? You know, it's like, right. so yeah. <laughs> So you're saying, like, have them do more other things besides just creating a profile? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. We're thinking. Or about just it, like right? feeling feeling out the site before they jump into that that personal aspect. You mean? Mm. Okay. Or, or jump into building their profile. I, I like that idea. I I like the idea of them trying out a couple of missions to to yeah. kind of discover instead of starting in some sort of linear fashion. Not that it's linear because you do have options, but I don't know. I could try that. That's a good idea. But I'm also just concerned that if I tell them just, like, explore it, that they're going to, like, explore something else completely, like, explore sneakers instead. Like, that they're not going to actually, like, well, use 
10 minutes or whatever it is to um, explore the website on their own. Well, well, if they have a job that they, like, you know, they have to comment on one or they have to complete something uh -huh. um, as a part of their exploration. So, ex so don't just explore randomly, but explore a mission that you want to do or, like, give them a specific mission. Yeah. Give them a specific mission. I would say maybe uh, off, top, off the cuff, I would say a mission that has a lot of choice or a choice of missions. <laughs> okay, I'll try yeah, that. Because they're different. Yeah. Yeah, I, but then remember we, um, you know, the ten self ten world questions. I think it's really important whether or not yeah. you do exactly that, but some some way to get at what what the what the young people are curious about, what their you know what their interests are, and starting there feels like an important thing to do. Okay. Um, others who aren't using the site yet, um, what is what is your vision and thought about it? I mean. What do you? I mean, Glenn Corey, you asked the question. Can I throw it back to you? What do you think next steps are? <laughs> um, well, so there's this grant, and this woman Jane is coming tomorrow to talk to us about it. I well, she's embargoed, by the way, so we shouldn't talk more right now about it. But go ahead. Oh uh, well, I just I had sort of envisioned it sort of mm -hmm. together with the newspaper club, um, and as a way that they could either just sit next to the kids who are working on newspaper articles and do their own thing which wouldn't ever have to go to the newspaper if they wanted to, or, you know, use that form to article and get some response, or, I don't know, just just that those two things seem to go together pretty well to me, and then I can team up with another teacher. So, and so you're imagining it working in after school. What? How? Yeah. yeah. Well, because the technology access at my school is really not great. Plus, there's all these like computer programs they want us to use. They pay for like Reading Plus and Rosetta Stone and stuff. So it's not like we just have oodles of time around computers to begin with. And when we do, it's like this very purposeful: use these specific programs or be working on portfolios or something. It just doesn't feel like I have a lot of time around a computer with all my kids. Mm -hmm. and there's some basic stuff that needs to be covered first, like how to use their school email and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I also have had um, much less access to technology at my new school than my old school, so my vision has changed a little bit. But I think I was when I introduced myself, I explained that I teach this repeaters class, and so I guess my vision would be to get some computers into that class and you know, do some some sort of inquiry project, kind of like we did, you know, along the lines of what we did over the summer with, because I think particularly with that group of students, they're very different learning styles, which is why they failed English before, so I think it would be really useful for them to have, you know, the visual component or the coding or whatever it is that we do in class. So I'm trying to figure out how to get those computers in my classroom on a day-to-day -day basis. That makes a lot of sense to me, based on the limitations that you mentioned with the, with the technology too. You know, um, have to let us know how it goes. Well, my students have done stuff. Like I did, we did some of the we did the six word memoirs together. We did um, we did some hey. questions for memoir because I did we did a whole memoir unit. But I unfortunately haven't had consistent access enough to have the time to get them to create a page and upload it. So actually, that's a question I have for you guys. I have students six word memoirs. I'm wondering if that's like, is it worth? Do I share it for them, or I mean, I don't want to just put them up on my page because it's not my work; it's their work. But do I wait until they have more things and then create the profile, like we were just talking about? Well. I think your question sort of is an answer, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I, in that I think we want them um, learning as quickly as possible to put stuff up themselves. Otherwise, we become the bottleneck, and they can do so much more than we could um, once they do that. So that would suggest that they put, you know, they post early, um, and you don't wait. I think, but you know. 
Yeah. Um, and, and Karen, um, just to volunteer her again, is, um, is happy to help you get your students um, up on Youth Voices and, um, you yeah. Yeah, I'll just jump no, in for a minute. Oh, well, you are there. Good. Just to say hi for those of you who haven't met me. I'm Karen, and I'm just actually um, I'm listening, and I'm have most of um, Louise's. Now I can't even say what they are. Um, animated introductions are popped into the mission. So I did that already? Wow, look at that. I'm, I'm on par. <laughs> everybody too. But mostly, I, gotta, I just Karen, want to say I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Karen. I'm going to call you out and say I got an email from Karen a couple of weeks ago saying I'm working with Louise and she is so much fun to work with. <laughs> so I love so getting like, those kinds of emails too. <laughs> so if anybody has anything that they would like help with, like making a school page or setting up accounts or just like all the sort of administrative stuff that just takes time to do, um, totally email me anytime. Or you can you could if you it's Karen at K12 Open Ed is. I'll put my um, email in the chat. Or let um, me know, and I'll get it to you. Yeah, yeah. Either. But I'm I'm around and happy to help. So nice to see you all. But I don't I don't hear that that's necessarily the the only issue. Um, can I, can other people talk about like um, projects you're working on that? So I actually let me go back to Gabrielle for a second. The memoir work you did. How did how did they did they do those in docs or what do those look like at this point? Did they, um, yeah. What kind of process did you go through with that? Well, I have so two different classes. With the ninth grade class, uh, there was already a memoir unit that was in place at the school that the other ninth grade teachers had created last year that I was using and kind of working off. And it was also my first unit at the new school, so I yeah. was kind of still finding my place and figuring out how to slowly integrate my own ideas into the existing curriculum. Um, but we, we used some of the, the brainstorming, but a lot of that happened like in notebooks. So um, like I was talking about before with the, the quick writes that we did every day and then um, like asking the questions, like the 10 questions that we did. Uh, with my repeaters class, just in the beginning of the year as kind of like a, as we were getting to know each other, they did the six word memoirs online. Um, and some of those came out like really, really cool, and I was really impressed with them. Uh, unfortunately, that's they're not. I didn't have computers the next day to put them up. So, like I said, I think my vision of moving forward, especially starting in the next, in the next um, marking period, probably would be to have if we do this inquiry-based project, to have them put those up in the beginning kind of get started and familiarize themselves and comment on each other's and then we can kind of use the site moving forward from there. What did they read um, as part of that? Persepolis. Year? We read Persepolis oh, cool. um, and then students wrote, so we did lots of different kind of like free writes around different topics. So they wrote stories about their own life having to do with a significant place, having to do with a significant person about a time that they traveled, and then they looked through all of those kind of brainstorms, if you will, and selected the stories that were most meaningful to them to compose a final memoir at the end. Cool. And those all exist in documents, like students typed them up, and they, they some of them are in Google Doc, Doc, some of them were typed in Word, but could easily be transferred to a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. So the shift that I that I hear, if I can, in, both in um, in a lot of this, um, is is that shift toward, and it's not easy for for us to get there or for students to get there necessarily. Is the shift toward um, taking ownership and caring about com communicating our 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 voice with other people, and you know, and be being part of a conversation about the work. So it's not not just doing it, but also Doing it in community, you know. Um, so, I think, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> oh. But I think, but yeah, I mean, I think that's our goal. Um, yeah. But, there's one other thing we did this summer that I've been using that has translated very well, and I was very skeptical of it, and that was the badges. I didn't see how that would work, 
in a classroom, but it seems to have been designed for teenagers because they really care about these digital badges. So I've done two so far, and it's sort of like a culminating thing at the end of the marking period. And you're so using the P2P, P2PU badges too? Yeah. yeah. Um, so at the end of the first marking period, they had to have created their Youth Voices profile, and they needed their bio and their six-word memoir and their link to their journal and all these things, and then that was all a badge. And if they applied for the badge and did the narrative and all that on P2PU, they got extra credit if they were awarded the badge. It would be like a point or two on their final score. So for the first time ever, I had students that were going back and doing work they hadn't done weeks and weeks earlier because they wanted the badge. Mm -hmm. They have not discovered that they can award each other the badge yet. Mm -hmm. That's we'll really what happens with <laughs> But, um, Louise, um, I just want to point out too, you really, I remember you questioning badges a lot and trying to, to figure out the, the worth or validity, so I appreciate that you went through the process of trying it with your students and came out in this direction. It's important for all of us to hear. I haven't, I haven't tried badges myself yet in my own classroom other than in the summer, so I just wanted to commend they you. They love it. And like I print their applications and put it in their portfolio because it's a really good example of reflective writing. And one, the only problem I've found with it is one, P2PU is weird to log into. It's not as streamlined as other yeah. stuff. Yeah. And two, it cuts them off. There's a word limit. So I had a student that wrote a really elaborate application, like put a lot into it, and it wouldn't let her apply because it was too many words and she was upset. So they do it in Google Docs, but then the website isn't quite as um, user friendly as I would like it to be for for them. But it's been really cool because they really want these badges. They want their little badges. And so you, you've done a Paltoon badge also, is that right? I did a I did that one too, and that one was more straightforward, like just a link to theirs. They finished it. The timing was good. It was audible. They they worked it out, and that was used. That was useful for editing. I'm like, I watched it, your music's too loud, I can't understand what you're saying, adjust that and apply again. So it was a good for the revision process. They would make like little changes and then reapply. Mm -hmm. cool. So um, we're, I'm looking at the clock and realizing we're out of time um, here. Um, Jim, uh, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, we'll start with you if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> what are you thinking at this point? No, not really. I mean, everything Cora said about technology, I completely agree with. I'm just kind of in a different place because in my school, um, this is my second year there, so all the curriculum is new to me. Like, the, not only my three classes I really teach, but also this psych class I'm teaching, and that's kind of taking all my time. Um, and I'm really not sure how I would integrate some of these things into it um, and still have time in the day to do, like, to just live, you know? Um, that's kind of where I'm at, honestly, where I'm doing, like, I'm planning less than, like, one lesson's taking me three hours to get through, so um, I, I learned, I did learn an, a lot over the summer, but I mean, and I had good intentions, and I think we always have good intentions, and then, you know, Cora and I were talking about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, if we had this, we could do this, and that's great, and then all of a sudden, the school year started, and that's kind of where I am, so... That's very cool. No, I mean, you know, it, it takes, it, you know, it, it's not just technology, i got to say. I mean, writing, write, writing projects have seen this forever. It takes some teachers, you know, years to start integrating stuff they learn during the summer into their work. Um, so, you know, however it works out, that's, sure. that's all good. Um, and we're all here for each other. Um, can we, uh, Christy, do you want to... Let's just go around and have final comments from others as well. And then quickly. Um, I, actually, I actually wanted to thank all of you uh, for jumping on with us on a Wednesday night. Um, it's really nice to see you. It was, a, it was a pleasure to work with you this summer, so nice to hear what you're all up to. Um, that's really what I was thinking about while I was listening to you. I was like, oh, these guys, nice to see them again. Um, so that's not a very academic thing to say, but that's, that's what the Writing Project and Youth Voices does. It brings teachers together. Cool. Gabrielle. <laughs> Um, I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because kind of like 
gym just starting at a new school this year, I was completely overwhelmed for a really long time. And so now seeing you all and talking about these things is reminding me of some of the ideas that I had that kind of got pushed to the wayside while I was reacclimating. So I'm glad that we're talking, and I definitely am now thinking about it again and thinking of ways to, to get it up and running at my new school. Yeah. Cool. John Carr? Um, yeah, I, I just, there's like a thing we're doing now where kids are writing their own for extra fairy tales, and I think it could be a really cool thing to share, this creative writing, but it also feels very like perfunctory, just like, here, kids, here's a website, put your story on it if there's not going to be time in our curriculum or, you know, we've got our portfolios, we're just turned into a PBAT school. There's, like, a lot of stuff that we have to spend time doing, and so I don't want to just, mm -hmm. like, put it out there, just put it out there, but then again, in the future, it would be cool to have the stuff published um, so other teachers could see what's been done, so other students can see examples. So... I Fracture like Fairy Tale sounds, sounds like Scratch, by the way, too. But yeah, it could be a cool little... Um, I mean, I just like the idea of trying it out in after school so and see how it goes, and if, if they get a kick out of it, maybe we can find time during the school day also. Yeah, schools are busy places. Yeah, Julie? Um, this has been good. You know, it's good to hear where other people are so I can kind of think about what I've done with it and Thanks for everyone helping me troubleshoot the issues that I've been experiencing. And Louise, you're an inspiration to using um, this type of stuff in the classroom. It's really cool what you're doing. I uh, feel lucky to do it. Yeah. And Christy, I've been trying to be the laptop hog in my school. Yes. Hard. I've got to fight for those laptops every time I want them. Yep. I, I told you, I told you, Julie. The classroom, <laughs> get out laptops out of their cart and been like, I need these right now. <laughs> so, I, I told you, Julie, you can't fly under the radar once you come to something on the writing project. You, you got, you're, you're now on the radar, and True. Um, <laughs> that's good. Please don't get into any arguments. So we'll help you if you get into trouble. <laughs> since we got Louis, you into this You were going to say what you feel lucky though. Did you, were you going to say anything more? I feel, um, sorry, I was just emailing the PowerPoint. Yeah. I feel really lucky because I have a laptop cart parked in my classroom and I have no curriculum and nobody cares about what I do, so it's more <laughs> than it. Yes. But that's the price I pay for working at a really difficult school, and it's my trade-off. But I do feel really lucky, and the students are really responding to it. But I think they would have in the past, but what's blown my mind is what a equalizer it is for beginners. Like, they are able to participate for the first time at the same level, and that's really cool. And it makes my life easier, too, because I'm following the same curriculum for three classes just with modified instructions rather than three totally separate curriculums for that's a lot of work. So Youth Voices has made at least the first marking period a lot easier for me in a way. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Just respecting your time here. Um Karen, but do you have any quick last thoughts? Yeah, just quickly, I, I really the comment that you made about writing in community and what we get from that, Paul really struck me and it made me think about sort of it, it, all the talks we've had about collaborating across, cla across um, classrooms and you know memoirs came up in this conversation and you know, we know other classrooms on Youth Voices are working on that so just you know the I mean, more we can example, connect yeah, I mean Don it reads, makes yeah. Yeah, I mean that's what I think not just for students but for us that's what makes that's what motivates us to participate in community and to write publicly is those connections we form with other people and that's you know it's no different for for students so the more we can do that I think this thing you know where we've seen where people do that this thing can just take off and have a life of its own and then it's a lot easier for everybody than to have to sort of you know yeah. have it be an assignment and all that yeah, and then the tools follow, you know. It's not about using these tools. It's about making the connections. And, you know, but, yeah. So thank you all so much, uh, again, for coming here tonight. Um, 
we're we're going to be bugging you more and and being there for you as well um, as much as possible. Uh, we're here every Wednesday night um, at edtechtalk.com um, slash ttt, uh, which is a channel of the uh, World Bridges Network. Uh, Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set that up. Um, I do want to say very quickly that um, A Place to Stand is a movie about Jimmy Santiago Baca, and we have um, we, we will be talking to the director and a couple of teachers who have put together curriculum around that on Saturday, which is an unusual time. But we're going to be doing that on Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday. So, um, and that's going to be at 1.30 Eastern and, uh, what is that, I think 10.30 um, Pacific time. So, um, but you'll hear about that here and there. So talk to you all soon. Thank you again. Good Thank night. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Have a nice haircut, Paul. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs>